And those of you looking for more miniatures game coverage on Shadow of a Sit Down will be pleased to know that we'll be doing a proper review of the X-Wing miniatures game very shortly. In fact, I've, uh, <laughs> I've actually just ordered the uh, Tantive 4. Maybe arriving any day now, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait here. Quinn's our application to join the Rebel Alliance has been accepted! Are you serious? Yes, I am serious! Come on! This is Paul One, Quinn's. Do you read me? Stand formation! Yeah. Quinn's? Uh, hi, Paul. Okay, we're approaching the Imperial Outpost. Well, look, I, we... I don't want to be a dick about this, but why don't you get an X-Wing and I get... I mean, well, it just has two wings. I don't even know what you'd call it. Look, we've been over this. I call it shotgun. It's like an L wing or an I wing. I guess it's technically just a wing. Okay, we've, uh, we've almost I... arrived at the outpost, Quinn's. Lock your S foils in attack position. Are you taking the pit? Do it now! Quinn's! Quinn's, come in, come in, Quinn's! Quinn's! Quinn's, don't you want to play X wing? Quinn's! Quinn's! There's a package here, Quinn. Is this your, is this your, your big X? Is this your CR90 Tantive 4 Carillion Corvette Princess Leah's ship, Quinn's? When Fantasy Flight first released this, ages back now, Quinn's and I were all up ins, all up ins the X-wing miniatures game, like the astromech droids, all up ins the. You know, the, the holes that the, in the ships, the Astro, they go, we were down in the holes, we were up. Anyway, the X-Wing Miniatures game has a bit of a history. Going all the way back to 2004, there was an excellent World War I dogfighting game called Wings of War. A game where players would secretly issue orders for their pilots and then execute all those maneuvers at the same time with a thrumming of engines and a popping of archaic gunfire. Well, that's, that game's now called Wings of Glory. And it also has some opposition because those same rules were repurposed. They were used in the quite good but kind of ugly Star Trek miniatures game called Star Trek Attack Wing. And they're also used here, here in the X-Wing miniatures game. So a couple of years ago, we played that starter kit and we loved it, but we were a bit disappointed by how few ships there were, if, if I may. We said, the less ships you play with, the more obvious it is that the real strategy of X-Wing would materialise with more moving parts. Star Wars The X-Wing Miniatures game is a bit amazing and a bit expensive, making it a mercenary Han Solo of a game. You love it, it knows it, but really it just wants your money and it's going to be snatching it from your wallet with expansion pack after expansion pack for years to come. Well, today those years have came. There are an awful lot more small X-Wing ships if you want today. You can run breathlessly to X-Wing and say, I love you. And X-Wing can turn and say, I know. This is the release, the absurd release that has us revisiting X-Wing. This is the ridiculous packaging it comes in. This is an X-Wing miniature for reference. Now, bear in mind this isn't just a beautiful pre-painted model with no assembly required. Bear in mind, it doesn't just come with a whole deck of upgrade cards so that one time you play with it, you might field it with a gunnery team, some turbo lasers and quad laser cannons as a gunboat. Another time you'll have General Janda Donna, a Torin Far and a comms booster as a mobile command center. Another time you might just have an ionization reactor, slicer tools and a frequency jammer making it a hacking ship that nobody wants to get near. No, in addition to all of this, the huge ships all come with a campaign and a ton of tokens so that when you get your new toy, and it is obviously a toy, you can have a whole long day's worth of X-Wing going from mission to mission to mission with your new big ship as the star. 
That's a fantastic deal. It's absurdly expensive, but in terms of publisher support for a game you love, we've never seen anything quite like this. Today, whether you want to play these grand cinematic campaigns or whether you want to get into X-Wing's competitive yet very friendly tournament scene, or whether you just want to buy a handful of ships that happen to look very cool on your mantelpiece, X-Wing can provide. Yeah, so we've already reviewed the game of X-Wing where a few ships fly around an asteroid field and you have a pretty good time. Today, we're reviewing X-Wing, the game where you field 100, 150 points worth of ships and have a goddamn laser war across 90 minutes. Now, first though, first, let's have a quick reminder of why this miniatures game is quite as good as it is. So the reason X-Wing is so good is that it's a miniatures game with no downtime. Each turn starts with you picking up the dials, which are custom for each ship, showing lots of different maneuvers. You're going to assign these dials in secret to your ships, figuring out what you need to do, figuring out what your opponent might do. You want these firing arcs to be within range of enemy ships, but also there is a rule, importantly, that you can't check with any of these templates where your ship might, might end up. So there's a skill element there. Then you reveal in a great moment of theatre and these ties might all fly forward, but that's okay because you've done a 4K turn! Which means you slip past, you turn around, the X-Wing banks are, he's gonna get shot! Then you move on to the dice rolling. That is also exciting because Fantasy Flight know that it's not just an attacker rolling a dice, and of course, double-sided, so you've got green, Imperial, and then red because Rebels are... Fantasy Flight know that you don't just want an attacker to roll a dice, the attacker should roll lots of dice. They should roll more dice because they're close up. And then the defender... Oh, dice are fun, right? So the defender should get to roll dice too, and the defender might have some extra shields. So then all this happens, and then, oh, the X-Wing gets blown up! And this is the really clever bit. What happens as ships get blown up is that because you have less and less dials to play throughout the game, just as you're getting more and more exhausted with X-Wing, the game is getting faster and faster and faster until, showing how balanced this game is, most games of X-Wing tend to become one or two ships as all that's left chasing one another around the asteroids that mark the board. And you know what's a fine thing? Scale is a fine thing. The ability to choose how big your games of, of X-Wing are going to be according to how big you want them to be. Maybe you just want to have a, a lunchtime skirmish with three or four ships and you can do that, just a quick dogfight. Or if you have a little more time, you could go for a, a larger, grander battle and start bringing in more fighters and bigger ships. Or if you really have time and you want to make the investment of a whole evening of a proper tea time battle, then then why not send entire fleets against each other? And, and why not split those fleets up between your friends? You could bring a friend in and she can be gold leader and you can be red leader and then you can have, don't do that, you can have four people playing, two on each side and dividing and stopping to have tea and then coming back afterwards and say, gold leader, come in, cover me gold leader, I'm in trouble. She'll be gold leader because, you, you know, you don't want to be... Because I think Gold Leader blows up. Uh, you don't want to blow up. No one wants to blow up. And you could even, you could even, and this is a little bit transgressive, but you could even decide to have an uneven game. Give give one side the more experienced player a few more points and, and put yourself on the back foot. Or, or just have reinforcement waves that come in halfway through when you've lost ships, you've lost some TIE fighters, just, just pretend that more TIE fighters have gone in if you want to have a second wave to your battle. That's the flexibility that miniatures gaming can give you and X-Wing is lithe enough for you to really flex it if you want to, really twist and turn and twirl those simple rules for your pleasure. You can do a lot with the ships in your collection, even a small collection. And it's just so fuss free to do all this x-wings rules are just they're easy so easy it just wants you to come and fly and fight and shoot it beckons it tempts so easy so easy so many miniatures games are about assembling large fleets and armies and collecting miniatures that all have lots of different complex rules and templates and systems and subsystems and an x-wing isn't about that at all it's just about secretly picking a maneuver, putting that maneuver down, whatever ships you have, obviously it's about a variety of pilots and, and, and variety of miniatures, but once you've learned the game and you've learned how some ships work, that's it. You're a dogfighter in space. X-Wing is primarily about tactics. It's just, it's streamlined, but it doesn't sacrifice decision-making. It rewards the clever pilot. 
This then is a lovely little game and it's Fantasy Flight doing what they do best. It's taking a design that's been refined over years and applying their professionalism, their pace, their teams, their production values to it. So, would you like to know what happens when you take your team of two fires and your game versus two TIE fighters and you say, what if the X-Wings were defending a rebel transport? And what if they had a B-Wing with them? And the ties weren't just two ties, but a swarm of four ties. And they had an advanced tie phantom, which cloaks and decloaks, and a high-tech expensive tie defender leading the squad. And what if, uh, what if the rebels had Kyle Katarn, famous Jedi, flying with them, and another X-wing, and an experimental A-wing, but they're all rookie pilots, and then you put on music from Return of the Jedi. And you're so familiar with the rules that this game is as easy as breathing and the ties all barrel roll out the way of the asteroids. And the A-Wing flies forward and destroys one of them with a barrage of missiles. And you get a lucky shot on the Rebel transport which has a critical and all the communications between the Rebels are destroyed. The Phantom decloaks behind an X-Wing and eradicates it. I will tell you what happens. You grin from ear to ear for the entire duration, even when you're losing, especially when you're losing and you have one of the greatest times it is possible to have in modern table game. And thematically, a rule system that is based around dogfighting actually works really, really well for X-Wing. That, that Wings of War rule system, well, George Lucas himself imagined the combat, the space combat in Star Wars as a reinterpretation of old style dogfighting. The Millennium Falcon was, was based on crusty old bombers. It was supposed to evoke that kind of feeling. The trench run, the whole end of Star Wars is a reinterpretation of the, the famous World War II fighter film 633 Squadron where they fly in a thing and they bomb a thing. You see, Star Wars was never really supposed to be too sci-fi. It was supposed to keep things that viewers could relate to anyway, including that intimacy of dogfighting. And it's, it's almost farcical trying to see Lucas reconcile all this future technology and targeting computers with the, the wild spray of, of machine gun-like lasers. Star Wars, the, the, the X-Wing miniatures game is still about that intimacy of combat and the dogfighting and the individual pilots and their personalities and their, their personal clashes and, and the, the stress that they, they, they gain that piles up as they perform more and more difficult maneuvers and they're outnumbered and the game-winning photon torpedo, proton torpedo just, just falls short and their shields fail and there's a, a sudden blast and the pilot's blinded, he can't see. Uh, wait, he got a little cooked, but he's okay. I've seen people complaining on the internet that Shut Up and Sit Down doesn't care for thematic games, that games with muscly men don't float our boat, and it's just not quite true. We just feel that games so rarely uh, manage that feat of a good thematic game where stories come to life on your table, case in point. I was flying an A-Wing the other day, one of my favourite ships, and it had a Thai Defender behind it, one of the most advanced ships in the Imperial fleet, and the TIE Defender had a tactician with it, another pilot in that cockpit, coldly entering my coordinates and firing lasers at my A-Wing. And the A-Wing, I could see the pilot in my head, white knuckles gripping his controls, because the tactician's ability in-game is that when he shoots from behind, you get stress tokens, which means then my A-Wing couldn't do a K-turn, turn around and re-enter the fight. And when that ship landed, a critical hit that was a console fire, literally a fire in that tiny claustrophobic cockpit, the rest of the game faded into insignificance. All I wanted was for this boy to get home safe. Or let's look at it from another angle. So few thematic games actually really manage to conjure that, that magical joy of feeling kind of like a kid again. And it's not just that X-Wing is gonna have you sort of at eye level, one eye closed, squinting into the battle. It's that when you buy an expansion, it looks kind of like an action figure. I mean, we've, we've praised boxes before, but this is the first time Shut Up and Sit Down is actually a bit excited about properly praising some plastic packaging. These things, they come like a toy and you, you, you break them open and you mount the, the thing on its stand and you punch out the tokens and you take your, your new cards, which by the way are compatible with all your other X-Wing cards, so they might be some advanced proton torpedoes that you can mount on one of your, your old X-Wings you already have and you... Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Bre breaking into the box will be... Uh, it's not easy, You've just just use a knife. I mean, be careful when you use the knife. Uh, you know, 
Only Imperial Stormtroopers are so precise. Weapon of a more civilised age. Only two metres wide. But just like Beggar's Canyon back home. Ooh, so there you have it. The X-Wing Miniatures game is a phenomenal game with a phenomenal theme with a phenomenal future. But should you still collect it if you already play heavier miniatures games or you enjoy assembling and painting miniatures or you can't bloody stand Star Wars? These are much too difficult questions for a couple of punks like us. So let's ask the shut Let's ask the shut up Let's ask the shut up and sit down supercomputer what she thinks. Sure no. Use your instincts, Quins. Let go, Quins. Quins, trust me. Quins, you've switched off the supercomputer. Nothing, I'm all right. Shut Up and Sit Down recommends the X-Wing Miniatures game because it's, it's simple and yet so clever. And the, the presentation is, is excellent and it scales so well. It plays fast and loose and dangerous and it's so rare to see a game that, that has this combination of theme and presentation and style and it just it swoops onto the gaming scene whooping like Han Solo and blows away all those staid and stuffy preconceptions of what the hobby might be like and sends them spinning away into space floundering at their controls and doing that sort of that that breathing that's, <laughs> that's the thing what I would say is it's just really nice to be able to recommend a dice game I was surprised when I started playing this seriously still how relaxing it is just to roll some dice and have some fun and blow some stuff up. Well this is, it is, and it, it, this could be the game that gets your friends into into board gaming or it could be the, the game that gets them into miniatures gaming if you like that kind of thing and they don't. Or it could be what gets them into Star Wars and then they can watch the prequel. If I do have one criticism mm. then it's the it, wait, prequels. It's the prequels but, but also um, I've seen people talk about Attack Wing, and I've seen people talk about Wings of Glory, where the ships have an awful lot of personality. Individual models have a lot of personality. That's not always the case with X-Wing. I mean, sometimes they'll release something that's just totally bonkers, like the new TIE Phantom, which has to cloak and then uncloaks, and when it uncloaks, it appears somewhere else and then does its maneuver, and it's fascinating. But stuff like the difference between the hyper-advanced A-Wing and the oh. X-Wing and the B-Wing, I mean, really, the stats are a little different. But you don't get much of a sense of of, of, of of excitement, of novelty. You have to do that yourself with equipping these cards. Which Customizing. You might, which you may or may not want to do, because these cards are pretty expensive in terms of points and army building. Uh, so that's our one criticism. Fortunately, I'm only really making that point to try and make it sound like we're balanced critics, and now we have our own site. We don't have to be balanced critics. Um, so basically, just buy X-Wing. Buy as much of it as you want. Buy yeah. a couple ships. Start collecting with a friend. They're collecting Imperial. You're collecting Rebel. That's what I'm doing. Buy it. Just buy as much of it as you want or need. Play it how you want. Play it how you want. Could I play it without really customizing stuff? Much? Yes, you could, Paul. Do you know what my favorite ships are? Yes. I like the A-Wing. Yes, I, I... And I like the B-Wing, which are the fastest and slowest ships of the Rebel it's, Force. Yes, you said this yesterday. Uh, and actually, there's a pack coming out, which is Rebel Aces, which has an old paint A-Wing and an old paint B-Wing and new pilots for them both and new equipment for them both. Including refits and retrofits for the A-Wing, which make it worth we, we, less points when you're on the We should order that. I've already ordered it. I mean, I'm not that interested, but if you've ordered it... I have ordered good. it. It should be it? coming. Do you want to... Yeah. Let the Wookiee win. That's a good one. Mm. Or what about... Um, Your father's lightsaber. Get in the garbage. Shoot. You. I don't care what you smell. What does he smell? Garbage. Garbage. With great power comes great responsibility. No, that's a boring conversation anyway. That's from the film, that's not, you're not boring. What? Yeah, it's from the, because he, <laughs> large leak, very dangerous. That's what my doctor said. Why are you rubbing your... Hmm? Oh, try it. 